Hello crafty friends, I'm Lien from Studio Kato and I'm so happy to be finally back with this video. I had this planned for a while now. This is made with the new collection from Spellbinders, A Country Road, which is so fun. I already posted two videos with it and I love it. But this one is just a really fun technique that I like to use quite often. I'm going to build some patterns with my die cuts. Uh, these are not quick cards to make. If you're looking for a quick card, this is not the video for you. But I do have a lot of tips to share along the way, which is why this video is so long. I made four cards, four different ways to build a pattern. And I have lots of tips and tricks for each one. I'm starting out with this little birdhouse from the Rustic Garden die set from Spellbinders and before I even try to build my pattern I always uh, put together all of the separate pieces. So all of these birdhouses have a couple of different pieces so it's not the ideal die cut for a card like this because you're going to spend some extra time putting all of the birdhouses together, but I did cut uh, a little bit uh, from my workload here because there are actually two more branches to build this birdhouse, but I just left them out and no one is going to notice. It was a little bit easier to put together that way. And once all of them are assembled, I cut them in a couple of different colors. I did back them with a layer of white cardstock as well to make them a little bit more sturdy. I can start assembling my card. I like to do these on colored backgrounds. So I am going with a pale green here and I'm just going to um, figure out the layout here. This part absolutely takes me the longest because especially for this one, which is a geometric design because all of the birdhouses are nice and linear. They're all lined up or they're supposed to be lined up quite perfectly to get the effect I'm going for. Um, you can figure out how many die cuts you need exactly beforehand, which does save some time because usually I have a lot of die cuts left over. Um, but the lining up of this part absolutely takes the longest. Now, these are quite big birdhouses. <laughs> um, you'll see in the next cards that I do use some smaller pieces as well. But with big images like this, when you only have three in a row of them, it's quite easy to just line them up on the card. And it doesn't actually have to be perfect. Mine definitely aren't. But this tool, some press and seal, is really gonna help you out here because if you can just line them up once and then pick them all up at once with a piece of press and seal, um, it's going to help you out a lot. It's going to save you a lot of time. I did cut a bunch of tiny pieces of foam tape to put behind these birdhouses. And while I was pulling up the uh, release paper on one of the birdhouses, I actually pulled the birdhouse from the press and seal so I had to add that in later, but if you just have to add one in separately, it's it's still a lot more efficient than having to uh, add them all separately, because these are 12 birdhouses, it's a lot. Now, I added this sentiment, so I always leave space for a sentiment, usually when I go for this design. I usually have three rows on the top and one row at the bottom, it just works out most of the time. But I did replace the sentiment in the end because I didn't like the way it looked at first. So that was a fun geometric design and we're going to go off of that and do another linear design that is a little less strict, I guess, and it's a lot easier to put together. It does take more time, but I find it easier to line everything up because we are going to work on vellum, which is the first time I'm doing this. I This is the first time I'm building a pattern on top of vellum, but honestly, it was so fun <laughs> and it's so easy. All you have to do is line up the piece of vellum with your grid mat and you can see your grid through the vellum because it's translucent. You can also do this with acetate, I imagine. I don't love the look of plastic on my cards, so I try to avoid acetate whenever possible. And I do like the look of vellum, that frosty look, it just has a little something to it. And when you can see the grid through your card panel, 
it is so easy to line up all of these little tulips. This tulip is from the Build a Garden die set from Spellbinders. It's probably my favorite one from the, well, my second favorite <laughs> from the um, new Country Road collection. And you can see that I can just follow the grid and I did figure out a little bit of the spacing beforehand, but that that doesn't take that long if you can just um, play around with Louis die cuts for a little bit. Um, and then I can just put glue dots wherever I know the tulips are gonna be. And then I, once those are all added, I did add an extra layer of white first because I love my dimension. And then I'm just going to add the stems and then the leaves. There are a lot of separate parts to these tulips. So this was definitely not a quick card to make. But I loved the process of this. I really enjoy putting tiny pieces together like this. Um, die cutting them all out can get a little boring, but I like to listen to audiobooks or podcasts while I'm doing it. Um, I have a subscription to Scribd. I don't know if you know that uh, or if you know what that is. It's just a really, really fun uh, place to listen to audiobooks or read ebooks. It's very very cost efficient if you're a big reader so i will leave that link below so you can try it out um it is some sort of affiliate link so i do get something out of it <laughs> i will leave the explanation to that below as well um but yeah if you're if you're a die cutter <laughs> like me it can get a little boring if you have nothing to entertain you while you're doing it and I have found a lot of joy in my script subscription so I thought I'd share it. Now I cut these tulips again out of some colored cardstock as well and I am going from yellow to a purple-ish kind of color at the bottom sort of like an ombre effect for this field full of tulips and these come with two little pieces. So you have that base layer that I already cut from white cardstock. <laughs> I am going to add that again in colored cardstock. And then you have that center piece again. And I am folding that up a little bit, folding the petal up a little bit to add some dimension and movement through this very, um, I keep wanting to stay, say strict. It's just a very, uh, you know, you know what I mean. It's a very linear design and it can look a little bit flat sometimes. So if you add a little bit of movement there, it can add a lot to a design like this. I'm hiding tiny pieces of foam tape behind all of the tulips to prop it up a little bit on my cream card base. And with the vellum, uh, this is very thick vellum, so it is quite sturdy. If you don't have thick vellum, you might want to hide more pieces of foam tape behind the leaves of the tulips if you can, because um, that is going to add a little bit more stability. And you can see I cut foam tape with scissors. It's really easy to do because I have a piece of baking paper behind my foam tape as a second release paper. So it's not sticky on either side when I'm cutting it, so it's really easy on my scissors and it's not going to gum up my scissors. I love how this card turned out. It definitely was a labor of love because there are so many tiny pieces, but again, I find this incredibly relaxing. All I have to do now is add a sentiment. This is from the Punch and Pierce Frame and Sentiments that I said from Spellbinders which was a die of the month, so I hope it's still available. If it is, it will be in the description below with all of the other products I used in this video. I'm layering that sentiment up and I have a gold layer at the top. And once I'm happy with that, I can just adhere it down over top of my tulips. There is a shadow layer for this, but I didn't want to cover up any of those tulips at all because it did take me a while to make. So I'm not going to hide any of that. I'm just going to use a scripty layer and glue that down. Once that's in place, I do add a couple of gems as well because I do love my sparkle. And on top of the tulips, I have added some details with, um, with a white gel pen to add a little bit something as well to that. So that's a great way to step up your die cuts, just some white gel pen. But my favorite way to step up your die cuts is some Distress Spray Stains. 
This is great for if you don't have a lot of colored cardstock, but um, or if you just want to add a little bit of extra to your die cuts. This is going to add a lot of texture to the paper you're using. You can also use pattern paper, but I find that very hard to use, especially for small die cuts like this. Um, but for these veggies, I didn't want to just use straight up colored cardstock because I thought it would look a little bit boring and this is a great way to avoid that. So I just covered some thick watercolor cardstock with uh, a couple of veggie colors. <laughs> I chose orange and uh, I did mix in some greens there for the pumpkin as well. There is some purple carrots, some uh, red tomatoes and peppers and I have some green peppers as well. So I did make a couple of these backgrounds. You can use backgrounds you've already made that you have left over. You can use shimmery backgrounds, that would be really fun. And all you really do is just spray this to the high heavens till you're happy with it. Build up some layers, dry it in between with your heat tool. I love using my WOW Jewel Speed heat tool because it does have a lower setting. Um, if you're If you're wanting to dry a background of watercolor cardstock, you might want to use the lower setting to not burn your paper, <laughs> but yeah, it's just a really good heat tool if you're looking for one. This is the purple one, which I loved putting together because I got to bring in some pinks and some blues to really get some variation in color going here. I'm just going to use this for the carrots. I've never seen a purple carrot in real life. I just know they exist and I thought that would be a fun touch of color in my pattern. One thing about these backgrounds is they take a long time to fully dry. They will appear dry long before they are. Um, they are going to rub off on your fingers for hours after they appear dry. So I have left these to dry overnight and the next day I die cut my pieces from these and build my cards. So this is my actual favorite die set from the latest release. This is the seasonal decor uh, die set and it has so many different pieces for all seasons. Um, there You can make some fun Valentine's cards with this, Easter cards, but I made a Halloween card today. It's a little early, but I love my Halloween cards. Now I'm first going to just uh, make a veggie card. I am going to again add some colored cardstock to my card base first. This is just a pale teal. Uh, I think it's Conquered a Ninth cardstock, but honestly, I don't really um, keep in mind which cardstocks I use for each project. Now this is where I found out that I actually hadn't die cut enough pieces and it worked well for me because usually I go, I let my pattern go over the edge of my card. You can see that pepper and the purple carrot on the left side, they're going to go over the edge and it's going to look like I cut this card out of a larger pattern and I love that look. I'm going to use it for my Halloween card. However, if you don't have enough pieces or if you want a different look, try to keep it within the bounds of your card and it's going to look more like a framed piece of art is maybe a little bit of a big word here, but it's going to look like a framed shape and it's going to look more contained. It's a very fun look as well. You can even put these in the shape of a heart or a, an oval on top of your card and that's going to increase that feeling even more and it's just really fun. Try to start in the middle of your card. It's going to be easier if you start out in the middle and have to fill out the edges than the other way around. Um, and again, I'm going to pick all of these pieces up with press and seal once I'm happy with it. And then I can add more foam tape to these. Now foam tape, it's probably easier or more efficient to glue these down straight to your card. But it's going to look quite flat and if you do make a lot of um, die cut pattern cards like I do, you want to step them up <laughs> once or twice. So it's foam tape is just a very easy way to do that. I It does take a little bit more time because you have to peel away the release paper, but I think it's worth it. It casts beautiful shadows. I love the dimension of it. It's just going to take your card to the next level. 
And this veggie card is my favorite card I made, even though I love the Halloween card as well. Um, I just, there's something about vegetables and cards. I, I really like it. Maybe they're becoming the new flowers. I'm seeing more and more vegetable uh, products in the craft store as well. And I really, really like it. All I'm doing is adding a sentiment. Um, this is from a discontinued stem set from Jane's Doodles. So I'm sorry about that. But you can always print a sentiment out if you want. I white heat emboss this onto green cardstock. And to set it apart a little bit more, I also die cut a second sentiment strip from gold glitter cardstock and put that slightly offset behind it. For my final card, I am going to start with the sentiment. And again, there's a reason for this. I want the sentiment to be part of the pattern or to be inside of the pattern, not on top of it, uh, like the other uh, two cards I made. So this is a Halloween card. This sentiment is from the Dancing Ghost die set from Spellbinders. I assembled this um, and lined it up on my grid mat, picked it up with a piece of washi tape, and I am just going to add glue to this and add it all at once to my card. This washi tape is great because you can kind of see through it so you know how to line it up. Um, any light washi tape will do this, so I'm not going to link to this. I don't even know where this is from, to be honest. Um, any light tape will work here. Once it's dry or a little bit <laughs> stuck to your card, you can peel away the tape and start building your pattern. And like I mentioned before, when you're building a pattern, you want to start from the center out. So that is why I glued my sentiment down first so I could build my pattern around this. I am just going to lay out all of these fun pumpkins. I love the texture on them with all of the splatters from the spray background. Uh, all of the colors from the sprays that I used will also be in the description below if you're interested in those. I don't have all of the distress sprays, but I really, really like the ones I have and I've been using them more and more. Now you can see off to the side there's another Petri dish. I like to keep all my die cut pieces in little Petri dishes that I got off of Amazon. It's really cheap. Um, you can get a 20 pack of these for, I think I got them for 10 euros and I've been using them pretty much every day since I got them. Um, anyway, in that little petri dish are some little vines and leaves that are also in this seasonal decor die set to decorate the pumpkins even more. Now I didn't add those vines and leaves before I picked all of my pumpkins up with press and seal. I'm going to add them in later, it's going to be a little easier uh, for me. Now, these do go off the side of the card, and I love that look. Again, it's going to look like it comes from a bigger pattern, like the pattern continues beyond this card. And I am not going to let those pieces of pumpkins go to waste either. I'm going to trim them off of the card, and then I'm going to use them on the inside of the card. Actually, for the veggie card, I did something similar. I had a couple of carrots left over and something else as well, and I added that to the inside of my card as well. So if you have pieces left over, which is often the case when you're building these die cut patterns, because you want to cut more pieces than you will probably need, so you have plenty of pieces to play with as well. You can always add those on the inside of your card or even to your envelope as well. Um, that would be fun too, a fun little touch uh, to your card design. Once that's done, I can add all of those little vines and leaves. I'm just going to add those with liquid glue. Just play around with it a little bit to get a fun design. I've said it quite a bit during this video, but this is one of my favorite ways to make cards, just building a pattern. You can either do this with stamps or die cut stamped images. Um, if you want, you can do this with just die cuts like I'm doing here. And there's so many ways to do this. Uh, my favorite way <laughs> for this video is um, the vellum trick. I really, really loved that. I loved how relaxing it was to just follow the grid and don't worry about placement too much. That was really fun to do with those tulips. But I really like the whimsical design of these, um, these pumpkins as well. 
I always like to take my time with these card these cards but once the vines are added that's it for the pumpkin card so we had that fun geometrical design with the birdhouses, which is a great way to build a pattern and include a sentiment strip. You can always find a place for a sentiment strip in one of those geometrical designs. And then the vellum trick is, again, my favorite from this video. I am very happy um, that I thought of that. It's probably been done before. Um, I don't know where I got the idea. Um, but it's a great way to see the grid of your card through uh, the vellum. The veggies are perfect to show you how you can add some texture with some uh, distress sprays or inky backgrounds. And I did the same with the pumpkins. And having your design go off the edge is always going to give you a slightly different look. I hope you like these cards and ideas and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a thumbs up on this video and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to read them. Let me know what your favorite entertainment for your craft room is. I like to listen to audiobooks, like I said, but maybe you like to watch some Netflix or something else. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.